Successful Minds with Patricia Barnowski Schneider, the show that takes you around the world to share interviews with some of the most successful and relevant people on the planet. Hear their stories and get the most important business lessons they have learned on their road to success and get exclusive advice on how to implement their success into your life and business. Successful Minds with Patricia Barnowski Schneider is brought to you by the Strategic Advisor Board and your host, Patricia Barnowski Schneider. back to Successful Minds. I'm your host, Patty Baranowski-Schneider, CEO of Pristine Advisors. Today, I'm joined by Samuel Apon. Our topic today focuses on life in general. Okay, so thank you for joining us, Samuel. Tell us a little bit about yourself. Um, okay, um, that's a good question. So I'm, I'm a published um, author. I, I'm an investor. I do philanthropy events. Right, right now, I'm transitioning into um, t- full-time TV career um, in sports or in like entertainment industry. And and I'm a public speaker and coach. Um, like a mixed bag of nuts here, yes. <laughs> yeah, but, but, but I'm not, I, I don't juggle everything. That's nice though. You're definitely, uh, what do they call that? A uh, jack of all trades. <laughs> Pretty much, yeah. Nice. So now, what inspired you to pursue a career in sports and entertainment? Um, well, well, to put it like this, so when I was four years old, um, I, I was I was mostly adopted, and pre- and pretty much when I, when I was living with like in foster care and living with like adults and whatsoever, they gave me the choice of finding something that I have to do. Or, or else they'll put me in something that I do not want. Right. Um, so, so pretty much, it it was more of like I wake up and then I'm playing and, and I'm like learning baseball and, and I'm going to be on the team for baseball in New York. Or two, if I'm not doing that, they're going to put me in theater classes oh. or theater um, <laughs> right. to, to do um, community theater, something that keeps me busy. Right. So you basically got what made you happy, which is good. Yeah, pretty much. So, and then, and then, pretty much, um, base, baseball like was was like the open end door that opened so many like variety for me to like learn how to play and like learn the fundamentals and learn how it works. Right. Yeah, it's a lot with the sports, teamwork, discipline. There's a lot. Like that's why they encourage yeah. a lot of the kids in school to just especially troubled kids to like get them on a team. It'll really straighten them out. And it's something fun for them. So it's awesome. Mm, yep. Yeah. Now, what have been some of your biggest accomplishments so far? Ooh. <laughs> um, if, if I have, I, I would like to, um, I'll put it this way. My, my least accomplishment, the least one was pro- is probably graduating from college. <laughs> wow. <laughs> so yeah, it's, no, 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 it's, 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 no, 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 it's, it's the least, it's the least of, um, it's the least because, because I wasn't, I was like graduating from college was never a goal of mine. It was more, it was more like, okay, I know that I was going to graduate. So it wasn't like a surprise to me that I graduated. Wow. Um, but the biggest one ooh, is probably working for the NFL, um, um, becoming cancer free. Wow, um, congratulations. <laughs> Thank you. Um, let me see. Um, shoot. Um, I mean, you've done so be- much. <laughs> be- yeah, be- becoming a U.S. citizen. <laughs> you yeah, become a U.S. citizen. Um, so, yeah, this is year 20. So, wow. 20 years. Nice. 20 years. Wow, that's not, that's crazy to really think about. But 20 years as a um, as U.S. citizen. Nice. Um, yeah, I mean, anybody see. could check out your website, and there's just so much that, I mean, you, you know, you, <laughs> I love the book, you can overcome anything with love. Um, right. You know, I mean, even if you go into businesses and services, <laughs> there's just so much that's going on, I and mean, it's it's awesome. Yeah, but but it was a group of um, authors that came together and, and so to, write their, to, write, to, to, to write their piece, and right. um, and, pre- and pretty much we all have a story where we share those was yeah. those. One, there was one story that, that kind of hit me where, where a lady got, got married like three times and, all, and she divorced three times before she turned 30 years old. I was like, I never, I was like, I never heard of that story in my town. <laughs> yeah. Um, but, but I would say that the big, I would say that a big accomplishment, 
But yeah, it's pr yeah prob probably coming up, which is probably working um, as an actor, pretty much. Nice. Yeah. We'll be seeing you on the big screen soon. No, <laughs> just kidding. <laughs> <laughs> oh, my, oh my God. No, no, th no. This year's hectic. I got like seven, seven like movies that I'm seven movies that I'm doing. Wow. That's awesome. You definitely yeah. go get it. That's pretty cool. What motivated you to launch a campaign to invest in a thousand plus companies? That's a good question. Um, when I first found out that I, that, um, I was going to be my parents for the first time since I was born. So when I was born, my parents and I, we separated. Yeah, we separated. So I, I never knew anything about like my my biological parents and what's over. And when I found out that um, that I was going to meet them and what's over, like we, we met each other at the airport in Seattle. Mm -hmm. and, and and one of the people that came to me when um, when there was like tons. I mean, that airport was full. Like that airport was full. Like everyone, <laughs> like as soon as I came out, out of the airplane, everybody started looking at me and I was my but it, it was pretty much full wow that was yeah. everybody coming to meet you everyone coming to meet me but That's but the awesome. big thing but but the big thing was when um it was the day after i arrived in seattle and i met my parents and i got a phone call to come to the office, principal's office because i started school the next day which was kind of <laughs> weird which was kind of weird it was my first day in america in, in school for america and the big the big thing was I came to the office. She gave me the phone, and the first person that ever talked to me was Warren Buffett. And he, wow. and he, and he, and he wanted to introduce me to the world of Buffett investing. And he believed that if I, he believed that he wanted me to make a lot of money, and that if I didn't do it around <laughs> around that time, then it was, was going to be too late. Wow, that's actually really impressive. <laughs> Yeah. Wish I had a call from Warren Buffett. That's actually awesome. Yeah. <laughs> yeah, and 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 to like like the the training the training was ridiculous. I go I go to school and then I had like an hour conversation with him and then um, check up on all my investments and wow. I was like, yeah, it's it's a lot. It's a lot. It was a lot of work. <laughs> Welcome to America, right? <laughs> no, no, no. It was, it was it's a lot of work between like like living life as a kid right. and like living life like being an investor as a kid. I was like, yeah. But my wow. but my first my first investment was with Under Armour. Wow, that was actually pretty good. I love their clothes. Yes, nice. <laughs> yeah, but 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 they weren't but they weren't big that time. Oh, that's okay. <laughs> they, everybody starts somewhere. Right. I mean, they, they didn't become big till like three three years after um, I invested in them. Wow, that's pretty cool. Yeah. Now, can you tell us more about your experience working with various sports organizations? Okay, so my first okay, so in col in college was so I wasn't really big on like working in sports. I thought I was gonna be like an accountant or finance because I because I'm a very good and good with numbers, but I also like to do people's taxes. Mm -hmm. And then like I, I changed I changed for some reason I changed ma majors. It was over. So once I changed majors in 2015, I started working um doing college um athletics. That's where I started. Like I did everything from fundraising into marketing to alumni association to um event management to um marketing to working behind the scenes for for for, for like sports games pretty much right. wow yeah you just basically get involved in everything that's pretty awesome so you got to yeah. be pretty interesting and, <laughs> yeah um and then and then once i graduated from college after, after three years I was like, nah, I'm not gonna really get into like um, college sports. So um, I went, to, I, I got my first job after um, college for the USC basketball, and I was I was there the whole summer. Um, mm -hmm. This was in 2018. Okay, wow. And 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 then from from there, I went from USC basketball to um, to the San Jose Sharks to <laughs> San, to the 49 to the San Francisco 49ers. And then, and then, um, I got the biggest call from um, the NFL's office um, that they wanted me to. No, they wanted me. To, they were offering me the job, even, even though I was um, interviewing for another job for the NBA. <laughs> wow! I see they recognize talent. That's pretty cool. <laughs> yeah. So, so they, they offered me the job um, when I was interviewing for um, for another the same position, but in a different sport. Um, <laughs> And uh, um, in the different sports, and I've been like traveling and traveling. <laughs> <laughs> and then um, I did it for two for two years, 
And then I was like, yeah, I'm, I'm thinking about doing, doing broadcasting. So, <laughs> so, so I was like, yeah, I'm going to, I'm going to, well, right now I'm doing training for best, um, for broadcasting okay. before I step, before I step into the market. Right. That's good. Be prepared for sure. Yeah. Okay. Pretty so much. Now, yeah. So now what's been the most rewarding part of your philanthropic, okay, now I'm going to be bad at this, philanthropic <laughs> efforts. <laughs> Yeah, right. You, Philanthropic you, efforts. You, <laughs> um, wait, well, okay. So you said that what's the what's the big what's the big the most rewarding part? Um as well, actually I've been doing I've well, I've been doing um philanthropy events since I was, I was a kid. Um and is and I've been doing it ever since. Um the the biggest thing is like pretty much like nothing about money, but also like thinking about like making an impact uh, because like, uh, because I know there's people who are struggling to, um, to pay rent, but also people who are struggling to provide the next meal for the family or um, need that extra support, like that, that kick in the blood or something. So like not, not just me, but like whatever people can do to like donate money and give money to, um, of the people that is is going to be wonderful. That's actually really nice. I mean, nowadays it's um, it's nice to see people giving back because in a world of everybody gimme gimme gimme, you know, when you have somebody who's looking to help somebody and not ask for something, is actually a really nice quality. Mm -hmm. Nice. Now, what led you to co-found Unleash Your Potential? And I guess tell us uh, a little bit about that. Um, uh, the the Unleash um Unleash Your Potential is more focused on helping people like get get back on their feet and like keep moving like um or or i mean help people get back on the feet and keep moving but also helping people people become the best version of themselves um uh, that's the biggest thing for me so like if people contact me and then ask me to coach them or um help um ask me to become a public speaker for for the events or whatsoever um that's that's what i'm here for um the the reason I did it was because was because I had a, I had a I had a conversation with him when I was like very sold with Sean Maxwell and trust me I did I did not know who the, I did not know I did not know who that man was trust me I didn't I mean and, every, and everybody wanted his autograph everybody wanted his autograph like and he know he he came he came to me and he told me that you no know, he, he introduced himself he said like hi my name is Sean Maxwell and I want to be your friend. So oh. that's that's what he that's that's what he said to me when I was five years old. Um, and the, the the first thing he talked about was um he was he was going to have this academy where he's training um young like kids in college, mm -hmm. not not under eighteen, but I have to wait till I was eighteen or so to to be trained by him. Mm -hmm. So he was going to wait, but like he he had this program where he wanted to open the doors for kids going to college where they can train as a speaker, as public, um, as a coach, as a trainer and, and all that stuff. And, and I was like, yeah, I'll, th I'll think about it. And I'll, <laughs> I'll, I'll think about it. But, but yeah, the first, the first interaction, like I didn't really know anything about John Maxwell to be quite honest. <laughs> And then, and like, and then so many years later, I was like, yeah, I'm just going to do a public speaking because he asked me to do it. <laughs> well, he recognized the talent, which is actually pretty, pretty cool. <laughs> yeah. Now, what's been the most challenging part of being a two-time Forbes Under 30 finalist? Another There has never been a challenge because no one ever, 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 ever asked me that question. <laughs> nobody, <laughs> nobody, nobody ever asked me that question. But I'll, I'll say that the big, the big challenge is how am I going to raise a family, mm -hmm. but also like try to not not balance it out, but try to do both. Um, where I'm doing like big projects, rather than if I'm on TV or like movies or um, or investing or or whatsoever, like the biggest challenge to that for us is coming home and making like making sure that that they're they're safe and they're fine and right. and all that stuff. So so it's gonna be it's gonna be very interesting to see how that plays out. Yeah, I mean that's everybody's biggest thing about how do they juggle family life because obviously there's bills to pay, there's you know all of that. You want to buy house, it's all not, that. No, 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 not it's, it's not it's not the bills that's being paid. Is is the um is 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 the external external part um of like 
of, of like if, if my kids go to school like are they being followed to go to school because okay. because my name is my name is like so right. big <laughs> yeah i know yeah. That's a, you have to have a private school <laughs> now but I mean, yeah i mean yeah yeah i mean because like i said i don't i don't want this to like to be a, to affect their um life with their life yeah. like yeah, well, that's actually pretty cool that you think about that in advance, you know, because some people just, they're so focused on their own thing that they're not paying attention to the trickle effect on other people. So that's good. Now, how has your membership in Alpha Sigma Phi Fraternity and National Football Foundation impacted your career? Um, so for the National Football Foundation, it's, it's, it's a nonprofit where, 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 yeah, where we raise money for like high, I mean, high schoolers, um, we we'll start. Let me put this right. We raise we raise money to give to high schoolers who give money to the com community that they grew up in, um, or, or they can well because for one they cannot use the money um, to go to college because they're and because they're one they're an athlete and two they cannot take money outside of um, the state they're in. Every every state is very different, mm -hmm. but um, but it's it's a way of like interacting. It's a way of like networking with. Um, high schoolers and college, college, um, college, um, fo um, college football players, um, mm -hmm. coming to coming to get like every word. So like, um, that's the big thing. Like raising money to give to give back. Um, as far as for <laughs> Alpha Sigma Phi, whatever is, <laughs> it's, it's very interesting because Alpha Sigma Phi is more is more of like like a new fraternity. So I've been with the fraternity for two years. Um, it was like, big, when I, when I joined, there was like little to no impact, but I know that that um, organization has had a great, tremendous um, support everywhere. Nice. But, but when I started, it was like a new fraternity um, mm -hmm. that's, that was just started. Right. Oh, so yeah, gave them the legwork. Yeah. Told them what they have to do. <laughs> yeah, but but the big but the big thing was um, for the National Football Foundation. It's more about like um, high school football players, like giving back, but winning awards to give back to the community. Nice. And 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 another another part of of the organization is um, you voted for who is the best player, who is the best player in college football. Mm -hmm. So um, so we we vote each year and then. Um, the winner will, will be selected and announced on national television. Oh, that's nice. I mean, that's a good incentive to get them motivated to do better, yeah. you know? Yeah. Nice. nice. Now, importantly, how did you manage to juggle all of the positions that you have? I, I don't. I don't. I don't. Um, I was also this. So, like, any, anything investing will be more, th more through, like, my lawyer. I'll put it that way. <laughs> right. okay. my, uh, yeah, my, my lawyer. Yeah. I'll, I'll bother my lawyer because because see yeah, um I mean I don't really I no I make decisions but I don't like make like every single decision right. um I I never try to juggle it all out I just try to um, Delegate. um <laughs> no 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 I, I try to do one at a day not okay. like try to do or like one a week or whatsoever like what whatever it, whatever it is the biggest thing that I need to do that's what right. I do nice. Nice. I, I I would say that um, another thing I was going to talk about was, I gave I gave one of the articles that that I read him, but it's all, also it's all about like living a life full of love, but not right. living a life full of hate. Right. Um, I would say that the biggest thing that we can do is is to provide kindness, and that kindness in this world is the biggest thing that um, that that we all need. Right. Yeah, this world, it's, you know, everybody's competing with one another and it's, you know, every man for himself and who's going to get the, the best deal. And, you know, and it is true. It's like, you know, we're all here. We're all here. No, 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 no. It's not, it's not, it's not people competing against themselves. It's, no, that's how people see it. But mm -hmm. I think that the biggest thing is how are you competing against? I mean, it's, sorry, it's how are you competing against yourself rather than like, competing against others? That's okay. how. Yeah. Uh, so basically helping you to be happier with yourself as opposed to fighting with each other to be yeah, the best man. Yeah. <laughs> yeah, but but another another thing that I've noticed is that this world this world right. is pretty sad. It is. It yeah. Seems to be getting worse instead of better. So hopefully things yeah. change. <laughs> yeah, I, I, I um 
because because there there's been like a lot of um things that is expected and i think that we hold ourselves to a higher standard than than most people back in the day right you know it is too back in the day they didn't have like you know years ago they didn't have the computer everything's online and so you know like even with right. girls you know with the the fashion and blah 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 and you have to look this way you know you got girls who are anorexic girls who <laughs> because this is what they think is normal back then we didn't have constant exposure to this so mm-hmm. people now just uh, they just they're too much <laughs> now yeah. let's see samuel upon the actor tell us a little bit more about that um i i so i did i did acting when i was in um in new york the, this was like 23 years old, three, 23 years ago. <laughs> so, that, so that's how long, all ago, how long it has been, um, si- since I did acting. Um, and I, and I, and I picked it up right, um, right during the pandemic in 2020. <laughs> fun, fun. <laughs> yeah. And, but, 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 but pretty much I've always, I've always had, um, has someone like, like a, like a producer like contact me and ask me if i was interested um in in doing like a movie or a play or so nice. i was i told him that i was i was retired wow <laughs> okay nice. yeah so yeah i told i told him i was um retired so i was like i don't know if i can do if i can um have the motivation to to do it right oh because because i don't want to like mess up, mess up like a, a movie, <laughs> a movie right. project yeah but but like right 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 now it's like really 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 hectic it's pick it's, it's picked up a lot <laughs> wow. like I, I got like seven movies that i'm doing um doing this year <laughs> that's a lot i mean people focus on one every couple of years you got seven going on wow yeah i got like yeah i got i mean i'm doing well i got two done so far and i got seven more to go <laughs> wow well, I see too. Um, we'll direct people to your website too but you have a lot of press on there we, uh also like i love this one uh, Samuel Upon, actor, producer, investor, philanthropist, sports broadcaster, speaker. Then we have three tips yeah. to get life started. Uh, you have a lot of pages. I learned about legislator. <laughs> you have so much. And- right. Oh, actually, actually, no, 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 no. Think about it. My the biggest, my the biggest single accomplishment was working for the government when I was fifteen or thirteen years old. Wow. <laughs> what were you doing for them then? Um, I I don't you don't even want to know, but the, <laughs> oh, no, enough. okay, you don't want to you don't want you want to know, but the, but the thing is that I wasn't I wasn't well I never applied, so like working for the government was more of like my sister's dream of job. It okay. wasn't my dream. It wasn't <laughs> like my my dream of job. So they, instead of coming to my sister, like the the government brought the brought, brought their huge cars to my school to my school. Wow. <laughs> walked walked into the principal's office. And told the principal office that they're here to see me. Wow, you have a lot of clout. Man. <laughs> <laughs> yeah, I mean, and, and then I, I mean, I, I, as I was walking to the office, I was sitting down, and then they were looking straight at me. And then I walked, I walk, as I was walking to the office, I, I was, I was give, I gave them the strange looks of why they're looking at me. And and the principal, office, the principal was like, um. They're here. They're here for you because they 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 think that you you have the ability to work this job. Wow, that's actually pretty pretty cool. <laughs> yeah, I I, ne- I never even applied for it. By the way, I didn't really apply for it. So so yeah, when when they show me, when they show me um sh- when they show me them how much money I was gonna make, I was like, and yeah, upset. So. <laughs> I, I never I never I never seen that kind of money. <laughs> that's awesome. Wow. Yeah. <laughs> the, yeah, and the and the biggest and the biggest the biggest the biggest thing that I learned about money was was when I use when I use um Warren Buffett's first ten dollar first ten dollar bill and I put it in the show, so the machine um in, in our school uh-huh. and the, and I got in trouble I got in trouble and the principal um put me um in detention for that <laughs> but, but, Warren, but Warren Buffett was like hey at least at least he's learning about money. <laughs> wow <laughs> well see tell him thanks a lot for getting me in trouble buddy <laughs> yeah yeah That's cool. but but yeah but my, fir- my first my first job was when i was like 13 years old wow. um i didn't really knew too much about the job okay but but like i just i just went in and i was like yeah i'm only doing it because i want that money 
Yeah, but you know what? If they felt that you knew how to do something, you had the potential to do it. By all means, I mean, look, you learned a little bit here and there. Yeah, but 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 remember, the the rules at that time was you have to wait till you're eighteen, eighteen years old. But but well, they they came to me when I was like thirteen. Wow, (laughs) that's actually pretty pretty cool. Yeah. Now tell me, what's this about the disc profile um, for a trainer? Um, it's it's more it's more focused on for like business lead up. with like business um, companies or whatever. Okay. So, for example, so for example, if you if you were to hire, if you were the C- CEO of Walt Disney, okay. and you're looking to hire people, right? We you we use something called the Dix to figure out what type of people you want on your group. Do you want introvert people? Do you want extrovert people? Do you want people that that listen, or do you want people who who can compliment who can who has no um, regret of like complimenting you if you're right or wrong? Right. Um, do you feel like do you uh, do you feel like um, that you you want them to work as a team or do you want them to work individually right. on on a specific project if you were to offer? So so we use the Dix to figure out which group of people in that company fits well with other people who are similar like them. Right. Okay. So you're still impressive. Yeah. So now what do you hope people will gain from listening to this podcast? Um I was I would say like for, for for them I don't I don't want them to come like try to email me and telling me telling me that that they feel they feel sorry for me. But you have so I, much I get, I get, I get, I get, awesome. I get, I get, I get, no, but I, I get that all the time. <laughs> be quite to, like pe- people, people email me and tell me that, like how, how they feel sorry for me. I was like, I don't need to be feel sorry for. Right. You, you, you did, know what I mean? Yeah, you did something a lot of people don't do is that you took whatever, you know, your situation was and just, it's almost like you want to prove the world wrong. It's like, I'm going to show you that I can do it. And you did it in Excel, which is, you know, really, really nice. Yeah, and and I and I love that part, but I don't I don't like it when um when when people people come up to me and and they they are like um oh you I mean I I mean I feel sorry like they 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 you know you know like they don't make you think that I'm I'm someone that that I cannot walk and that they would think that that, that open the door is is gonna make me feel a lot better when I when I'm thinking that it when I when I'm like 100 percent healthy where. I can pretty much do anything that that I can pretty much do as a human. But the big, but the bigger thing is is that I just want people to like just keep going. I don't want people to be giving up. I don't need people to commit suicide on right. themselves. Yeah. So that's big. That's a big thing. I don't know. I think that's actually awesome. I mean, you know, a lot of people, like you said, they'll have, you know, a few little things. And like, I actually did a book, um, let me see it there, but life's obstacles can be your biggest motivators. And that's not that I want to air my dirty laundry out, but it's just showing other people that we've all gone through tough times, but it doesn't mean that it has to destroy you. You can actually use that and become a bigger, better person and know that you're not alone. So, you know, that's cool. And it's good that, you know, if people do do that, you're like, stop it. That's not what we're here for. <laughs> you know, get a backbone. You can do this. Yeah. Nice. Yeah. I mean, you, I mean, well, well, you don't need me to tell you that you can do anything. If, right. if you believe you can do it and you trust your gut and you put in the work to do it, then great things will, will come from it. Yeah. That's actually pretty cool. I'm going to put your contact info on the end uh, anyway, but yeah, tell people how they can get a hold of you. Social media, okay. social media or email. Okay. So I'll, I'll put I'll, your, yeah. Yeah. I mean, you can do IMDB. You can do um, one of my articles. Mm-hmm. Um, you, you can type my name on Google and, and the articles are all right there. Nice. All right. Well, thanks again for being on the show. Again, that was Samuel Alpon. So thanks for listening to Success- Successful Minds with Patty B. Never miss an episode by subscribing to the show. And thanks again, everyone. Thank you. Thank you for listening to Successful Minds with your host, Patricia Barnowski-Schneider. Please leave your feedback and visit strategicadvisorboard.com to get the latest and greatest business advisement on the planet. Follow us on social media for updates, and we'll see you on the next episode.